according to our rules, which we had over here. So that C out for stage one is going to be equal to the carry generated by stage one or the carry propagated and the carry in of the first stage. No big, no big uh, jump right there. But now that carry out one is the carry in for two, dig? Okay, so now this one's carry out, stage two's, what is stage two's carry out? Well, stage two's carry out, C out two. So if we use the formula that we had earlier, so carry generated by stage two or carry propagated by stage two equal to the carry, excuse me, and the carry in of two, that's what your carry out for stage two is. But this guy right here could be substituted with that guy right there. What you get, C out two, carry generated by stage two, or carry propagated by stage two, ended with the carry generated by stage one, or carry propagated by stage one, ended with a carry in of stage one. So what you get is basically you get it's dependent basically it's dependent on only on the initial excuse me one second. I got something spelled wrong in my notes here. <laughs> I was looking at it. Okay. Notice it's dependent only on initial carry. I for some reason I wrote array. Uh, notice it's dependent on the only on the initial carry. That guy right there. And the carry generated by its stage and the carry generated by previous stages. Now, if we hooked up our adder correctly with this carry in, that's always a zero for our first stage. You know, check this out. You put this guy, the zero in here. You know, so that's takes care of that guy. So what you get is basically it's the carry out for stage two is always instantaneously available, you know, because it's looking ahead at what's coming in. Well, first off, that C out here, it's using uh, for the first stage here, it's using A and B from that to generate the carry generated one, carry propagated one. So those are available instantaneously. As soon as A and B show up at the doorstep of this of this parallel adder, it's got the carry generated and propagated of everything. Yes, it takes more logic in the form of this right here, that you've got our your stage two has to have a uh, a little bit more logic to it. You know, we can extend this thing on and on and on, and it's just gonna get more and more complicated as the stages go on. But ultimately, you're getting a faster uh, a faster adder here. You basically get your carry out um, using the instantaneously available A's and B's. Okay, I think that is all I wanted to say about this here. Um, Oh, actually, yeah, I did want to say say something I did here is about um, some of the IC four bit adders we talked about earlier. Basically, the seventy four two eighty three it is a look ahead adder. It's a look ahead four bit adder. But when you hook up a seventy four eighty three with another seventy seventy four eight two eighty three, this guy, that guy's carry out is still that guy's carry in. Everything internal to that four bit is look ahead, and it's it's mocking. It's super fast. And everything internal to this one is also a look at. But there still is a ripple delay when you cascade um, two four-bit adders. And there would also be another one. If you had a 12-bit number here, there's another ripple delay. So internally, yeah, you're losing all that propagation delay, but you still have to deal with the propagation delay of the ripple from the carry out of each one of those four bit adders. Um, I think that's it. Uh, look ahead adders, faster. Yes, it's more logic. Uh, excuse, did I say that right? Okay, look ahead, more logic, but faster. Ripple, less logic, slower.